Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two on using Miller Plasma Cutter. This is a Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter. And uh, in the part one, we cut this little uh, sheet metal sign out of 16 gauge steel and use as a backdrop for future videos. And also did a little hand bevel on some 3 8 inch plate. Cut like a beast. Well, someone asked me to talk about the importance of air pressure and also air quality on plasma cutters. So that's what we're doing here in part two. I got this little air filter, an inline air filter from Miller, and I installed it on that 625 before I cut. But I, I got a comment on my YouTube video, and it really illustrates the importance of air pressure and air quality. A guy bought a snap-on plasma cutter years ago, couldn't get it to work right. It was rated for 3 8 He had a hard time even cutting sheet metal. Uh, his consumables would burn up after just a couple of feet of, uh, of uh, plasma cutting. And so he just stuck it in the corner for like 10 years before he finally uh, tore into it and got to looking at it and did some research on the internet. He found a flow restrictor and also swapped out a pressure regulator to a higher pressure regulator. And then it thing cut like a beast. So uh, that illustrates the importance of having enough air pressure and also clean air. He also put a dryer on it. He, uh, so basically he upped the pressure, removed the flow restriction, and put a dryer on it, and that's what made the difference for him. So I put this little inline filter on real quick here. You know, got some Teflon tape and put on all the fittings, and it's just a little pigtail that goes on. Really easy to put together and install, and uh, keeps the air clean and dry going into the plasma cutter. And here's the reason why. Once again, looking at these little consumables here, there's the electrode. You can see that little ceramic piece with the holes uh, put in it sideways, and that's to swirl the air and create the plasma effect. But the air, you, you need to have enough airflow coming through because airflow flows around the electrode and then through this little uh, nozzle with the orifice hole in it there. And if you don't have enough pressure and enough flow, it's not going to do right. It's not going to keep things cool enough. And if you got contaminants in the air, like moisture and oil, it's, it's going to wear the consumables out quick. But if you have everything right, if you have good clean air and enough air, enough pressure, then you're going to get good clean cuts. I'm making some cuts today on some uh, square tubing because my saw's screwed up. And uh, that's not a saw cut, but it's, it's going to be plenty good enough. See, that's a pretty decent cut. So you can get by with some uh, rough fabrication using a plasma cutter instead of a saw if you have to. A band saw is going to give you that nice clean precision cut. Everything's going to mate up without gaps. But a plasma cutter will, is good enough sometimes. And here's what I'm talking about. See, it's not a perfect fit up, but it's a good enough fit up for just throwing together a little tabletop. And that gap on the outside corner can be actually a good thing. Because sometimes you want to sink that weld in there you imagine if that was a saw cut, that would come out to a point unless I ground it off. And then I'd weld it up and I'd have a little buildup that, that I'd have to grind off if I was going to stick a, you know, angle iron leg or something like that out on the edge. So uh, being able to sink it in there is actually a good thing. Now, a lot of people have asked, what kind of metals will a plasma cutter cut? And the answer is basically any metal. Here I'm cutting some stainless steel angle iron, and but it's good for stainless steel, mild steel, and all kinds of, pretty much any metal, anything that conducts electricity, any metal that conducts, which is pretty much, which is any metal, actually, uh, it'll cut it. It doesn't matter. Cast iron, aluminum, it doesn't matter. I'll show you here in just a minute if I get done with this little stainless steel cut. All right, just happen to have a bunch of different stuff here. That's 4130 sheet metal, chromoly. Here's some stainless steel. Doesn't care. Here's some nickel alloy, Inconel 718, zipping along. It just doesn't matter. There's a piece of aluminum, a little T-joint, some magnesium, and some titanium. Plasma cutter don't care. It's like the honey badger. It don't care. It cuts anything. All right, well, that is it for today on this plasma cutter thing. And stay tuned for that slider job on TIG welding, that, those two stainless steel parts. Thanks for watching, and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.